Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. Today we're going to talk about the city's exciting plans to build a new temporary dog park right here near City Hall at Upper Point Vicente Park. For years, residents have been asking the city to come up with some type of off-leash dog park and now it's about to happen. The council had asked us to look at potential dog park locations throughout the city. We really were having a tough time identifying an, exi you know, an existing park site that could accommodate uh, such a facility. And our recommendation to the council back in May was to really look more towards a regional solution. There's been talk for a number of years about putting a regional dog park at the former Palace Fries landfill site. And we've sent letters of support to that effect in the past. And the council agreed that that at least for the short term is what we should do, is continue to support the regional solution. But at that meeting they said, hey, you know, what about just creating a, a temporary dog park somewhere? And the suggestion was made that there's a lot of space here at Upper Point Vicente Park where City Hall is located. And they said, we've got this big overflow parking lot there and some other areas. You know, couldn't we do something just on a temporary basis to meet the community's demand while we're waiting for the county uh, to make a decision about the regional solution. So um, that was the direction to staff, so we did take a look at our site here, and rather than the overflow parking lot, uh, which has obviously an existing use going on, we found another area at City Hall that we felt would work actually better. So under the city manager's um, purchasing authority, we've gone ahead and cleared an area and we're making plans to create it into a temporary dog park and we announced that to the council at the last council meeting. We first started with removing a lot of the acacia brush that was overgrown. Um, and that took a, about a 40 yard dumpster and after that um, the larger debris was mulched on site here. Um, and after the mulch was uh, ground here on site, it was spread around. We also did a little bit of grading here and removed a lot of the rocks. So you really improved the site, and how do you feel about this as this location at Upper Point Vicente as the spot for the park? I really think it's a good spot for the for the dog park. I mean, it's uh, it fits the uh, the area well here. It, it, the contours are perfect for the park, you know, it just follows the lines and contours in the road and things like that, so I think it worked out well. And joining me now is Katie Howe, Administrative Analyst with Recreation and Parks. Katie, you worked on this project to get this dog park up and running. Talk a little bit about, just for starters, how will this park be regulated once it opens? Uh, the park's going to be unstaffed. We're going to be posting rules and regulations. Um, we're going to be relying largely on people to self-regulate as they visit the park. And you know that just by talking with other places where there are dog parks that self-regulation works? That's typically how it works with city-operated dog parks, yes. And as far as who can use this park, who can come here? Uh, anyone with a well-behaved dog. It's going to be open uh, seven days a week during normal park hours, which is one hour before sunrise to one hour after sunset. And as far as, as our viewers are watching and they're getting excited, they're home with their dogs and can't wait to come here, what do you want uh, dog owners to know in terms of before they bring their dogs up here? Um, please come, enjoy the park. Um, we're going to be opening uh, late October to early November. And please send us any feedback to the Recreation and Parks Department or uh, City Council. We'd love to hear from you. I see there's like a lot of excitement in the community knowing this is going to um, happen. Um, you, you keep saying temporary. So why temporary versus calling this a permanent location? Well, the City Council has not finalized a master plan for this particular park site, so we don't know what the future might hold in terms of what other use this land might be uh, you know, put to. And also, uh, everyone, I think, agrees that the county landfill site offers a much larger area for a regional dog park. Uh, this site's only a little over a half acre in size, whereas the county site could potentially be an acre or more in size. Uh, so. That, those are really the two reasons that it would be temporary. We don't know what the final plans are for this site, and we're really looking towards a future regional solution. And who knows when that will be. <laughs> exactly. It's at least two years away. Um, for you, working on this project, what were some of the challenges for you in sort of putting this together? And you did it quite quickly. 
Uh, well, I think the main challenges were identifying the land use restrictions here. I think a lot of people know that there is a, a large portion of our uh, nature preserve is on this property. There's a number of areas that have deed restrictions. There's just a, only eight acres out of the, the total 72 acres that we own here that the city actually has control over in terms that we own it outright and there's no deed restrictions on it. Plus, we have a number of existing improvements out here. So we had to look for those those areas that weren't being used for something else uh, but were suitable to accommodate a dog park. So it was sort of a, a puzzle to try to look around the site and find the most suitable location. And that, that was a, the challenge for us. And again, going back to the demand, like how did you know there really was a need for it? I mean, obviously you're hearing from dog owners. I know I've been hearing for years, everyone's saying they want a place to take their dogs. Absolutely. We've been hearing that from residents um, and also you know other residents on the peninsula that there is a demand out there for an off-leash dog park. And um, they've come to council, they've petitioned, you know, certainly the response that we saw to even the idea of allowing off-leash dogs at RPV Beach demonstrated that there's a pent-up demand and desire for it out there in the community. On that note, mentioning the RPV Beach, what is happening there? Dogs, again, are not supposed to be down there, correct? That's right. I mean, we have a long-standing ordinance that prohibits animals on the beach. Uh, so that ordinance is being enforced uh, both by our park rangers and the lifeguards. Uh, and it, I'm glad to say that it has uh, settled down a lot from the last six months. And as far as the way the dog park's designed, it's going to be divided so that there's small dogs and large dogs. Is that, and how is that all going to work? Uh, there are two different areas. They're separated, one for large and one for small dogs. Um, there's two different uh, exits and entrances. They're double gated for safety so dogs um, can get in and out easily. So talk about the dog park itself. What's it going to take to build it? How, what is, how is it going to be set up? I think first thing we're going to do is put the fence in. Um, the, the large side of the dog park will be a five-foot fence and there'll be a five-foot fence in between the park that'll separate the large dog park from the small dog park and the small dog park side will have a four-foot fence. There's going to be an entrance and an exit to the dog park and the entrance is you bring your dog in leashed and then you let him loose once you're in um, and then you, when you come out you, le you put the leash on him and then you go out and, and the, the, the reason there's an entrance and an exit is so there's not uh, more than one dog in the dog run at a time. And then in terms of facilities for the public that comes up here, restrooms and those kinds of things, uh, what will be available? We're going to have a, a portable restroom, a wash station, we're going to have parking. There's five stalls and one handicap stall. And also one other thing, of course, parking for people when they come in. You know, you come into City Hall and there's different areas to park. Where should these people be going? I think most of the parking will be here around the area, um, here in front of the dog park and then alongside our overflow lot and um, other areas that are open. But try to keep the uh, employee uh, areas open during the uh, work hours. We were able to design this uh dog park to be under the city manager's purchasing authority so it will be less than twenty five thousand dollars the main expense of that is fencing because we're fencing a half acre area that was not previously fenced uh, but really in the scheme of things that's a very low cost uh, for the facility um, and we can reuse much of the materials and things that we're going to be putting in here if you want more information about plans for the opening of the temporary dog park you can always go to the city's website at palaceverdes.com slash rpv and for all you dog owners out there i hope to see you soon here at the dog park i'm liz brown swanson thanks for watching have a great day everybody mm -hmm.